Welcome to the Maxwell Print Verification Screencast. For the next several minutes, Steve Upton will be presenting an overview of Maxwell, the online color repository, and Color Shuttle, the client application for bringing color measurements into Maxwell. This screencast has a special emphasis on print verification and the printing of pass-fail labels. Good morning, everyone. This is Steve Upton talking here. We're going to cover Maxwell's print verification function today. When you see the demonstration of how it works, you'll, you'll probably gain a realization for how involved it can be underneath the hood. And part of the reason why it's taken us this long to bring, to bring the service to you as we've wanted. Maxwell is first and foremost an, an online interconnected kind of system. And we really wanted to keep that. We wanted to make sure that that flexibility and cost savings and the whole thing could be maintained and could be brought to the desktop in form of this in this print verification function and we believe it has in fact I'm quite excited about it it's it's uh, been a long time coming but uh, it's nice to finally have it to the point where we have good feedback coming back about it very positive as well as uh, constructive so and we like both of those but what, what I wanted to do was uh, I'll give you a quick overview of Maxwell sort of as we go along so I really wanted to talk about print verification with Maxwell and it, how it involves Maxwell, the online system itself, and how it involves Color Shuttle, the client piece of software. And so that's where I thought we'd start. I've created another uh, one of our demo users, Bob Maxwell here. I'm going to log in as Bob. Uh, we've already created one uh, one track for him, but we'll create a new one today. So, so Maxwell, uh, there's sort of a hierarchical function behind it. This dashboard you can see I just hid, that's where uh, we sign in and you can look at some of the uh, links to more educational bits and pieces and overviews and stuff like that. But for Bob, I can look in his account and get details about his stuff, put the email address and that sort of stuff in there. Um, but Maxwell's, Maxwell's pretty much about devices. We try to model real world items in Maxwell as much as we can, you know, the, to keep the metaphors alive. Keep, so, so a device that you would print on, a device that you would uh, use to measure with, that sort of stuff, that's the kind of thing that falls into devices. But where we track data uh, is, is in what we call tracks. And uh, the idea behind a track is it's kind of like a folder you just dump data into. In fact, it could be a hot folder to dump data into. And we'll get into that in a little bit. If you have some color data that is coherent, is you know continually the same, the idea is it's the same proofing system trying to proof to the same standard, or some sort of uh, printer that's trying to print continually the same way, or maybe it's a monitor you're trying to keep an eye on, something where you don't want the color to jump all over the place, then that's the sort of thing that belongs in its track. If you have a proofing system that's proofing to different standards, you probably want two or three different tracks for that particular device. So the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll make a, a new device in Maxwell. Maxwell has these list panes, like you can see, you can see under devices, and then detail panes. And the list pane, if, if you have the ability to create something new, you just click on the plus sign and there you go. So what we're going to do is we're going to say make an Epson 9800 proofer. Okay. And then it's a good idea to, to fill out the fields properly here and choose the, the brand and the model uh, for that particular printer. Uh, so Stylus Pro 9800. That will help uh, link a whole bunch of different things together and correlate data within Maxwell's overall structure, that kind of thing. And in the future, give better feedback about how your product, your particular device might be behaving relative to another, that kind of idea. In here, you can put a number of different things. You can put notes and the serial number, just sort of your own metadata if you'd like. You can also uh, specify a location if you want. If you have different locations, you put things. I think we made a location for, yeah, for, for Bob or the main plant. And that makes it so that in the future, if you want, on the left, you could go to locations and then drill down to just the devices for those locations. So if you have a company that's larger with multiple locations, you want to help sort out the, the devices, you can do that. When we've filled out all the required fields, which are the pink ones, the status goes to active here. And then I just click on done. Uh, and then I can go from here. Now, I can shrink these panes too. So when you're navigating quickly through the system, you don't need to see all the details. I can just shrink it. Uh, and let's go look at tracks. Now for this one, we want to keep an eye on this device. So we're going to be proofing on this. I find it seems to be a good idea to put a short abbreviation of the printer. 
name in the track. You don't have to, but it, it helps sometimes. So I'm going to say the E9800, and I'm going to make it a grackle, grackle proof. Okay. Now a tr that's that's all I really need to do to set up a track, except for one important piece, and that is uh, I need to set up a reference set. There's three standard reference sets that we've entered into this system. They have asterisks in front of them, and basically what we've done is we've already uploaded all the reference data, and we've put some metrics in there and that sort of stuff. So I'm going to select Grackle number one paper, which is, that's the standard Grackle data set that everybody's talking about and using these days, so you don't need to upload that one if you, if you want. Once you select that as a reference set, it will be used uh, to judge all of the uh, colors that you feed into the system. Uh, when it comes to configuring Maxwell, believe it or not, that's most of what you need to do. Uh, we've made a device, we made a track, and we select a reference. Now, we can make our own references, we can do all sorts of customization, but that's the beginning stages of it. So let's jump into Color Shuttle now. Now, Color Shuttle is a piece of software that runs on the computer. You download and install it, it's free. It, it uses the tracks and such that are in Maxwell. You don't pay for this particular piece of software. It has a background component that continues to run on your machine if you want it to. If it's going to be checking regularly for profiles for you or monitoring a hot folder for upload, that kind of stuff, then you leave the background component running. Otherwise, you don't necessarily need to. So there are different components to this. Uh, if this is running on your computer, your, your own computer, then an easy thing to do is go to the Maxwell tab here on the upper left and enter your username information. I'll do that right now for Bob. It will verify that account with Maxwell, enter it in. The chances are you won't need to enter that kind of information again. So uh, I can modify the win window size and a few things here to make sure I can see things I want. But really, the, there's, there's a number of different things you can do in Color Shuttle. Uh, it sees the displays that are connected to your system. It sees the printers that are connected to your system. Uh, and that can be used for different functions. And the Getting Started function here uh, on the upper left uh, gives a quick overview of the kinds of services that you can use Color Shuttle for and quick links into uh, the documentation, which is in colorwiki.com. And that will help you get started. You know, a little bit of reading always helps. Also, the Color Shuttle menu choice on the left here will link you through to the manual in ColorWiki, the version of this software, and you can submit feedback from here. Uh, there's a number of different things you can do, including measurement targets. You can, you can drop your own reference files for measurement targets in this folder, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about measurement targets in a bit, because Maxwell is very flexible, and as a result, it can be a little confusing because there aren't all these configuring options for how it accepts different target shapes and sizes and all that sort of stuff. There are a few targets that are built into Color Shuttle. We'll probably build a couple more in, and otherwise we'll be adding the ability for Color Shuttle to get them directly from Maxwell in the future. So what the first thing I'll do, and this is sort of the structure of the way Color Shuttle is today, is if I want to load data and measure data into Color Shuttle, I need to set up a hot folder. Uh, and there's a plus button in the bottom left corner of this window I can press. It's ready for me to set up a hot folder. And I can select a hot folder that's already already exists somewhere, like uh, up on a server. Or I can simply make a new folder and call it my Epson Proofer Hot Folder. Okay, so I've created a hot folder on the desktop here, and then I'm choosing it. So I now have, as you can see under my computer tab here, I can have the Epson Proofer hot folder set up. The next step I need to do is just to bond this folder with Maxwell. So this is basically telling Color Shuttle any measurements that drop into this folder need to go directly up into a certain specific Maxwell track. So I just click on Bond to Maxwell Track. Here's the location where I can sign in using uh, the primary user account I set up, which is Bob Maxwell. Or I could temporarily sign in sort of as an admin, and that's where you might sign in if this, if this were running on someone else's computer or, you know, out in production, in pre-press or on the press room floor or wherever it might be, then you might want to do the temporary sign-in. It'll remember your password and username long enough for you to set it up and then forget it. 